Um, Shia, at the time, uh, you know, he, he, he was a guy that, you know, when we did Fury together, you know, that was such a wild experience. And, you know, he, you know, he was this guy who came in, he like pulled his tooth out because he thought his character shouldn't have a tooth. You know, he like cut his, his, his face, you know, he didn't shower for eight months. And at, at first when I met him, I was like, oh, this guy's just fucking, he's just loud. You know, he's just, he's, 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 he's wearing his process on his sleeve, showing everybody how hard he's working. But what I found, you know, after the eight months of working with him was somebody who, and I, I you know, and this is, not, it's just my own, ins- he, he is every bit, this thing is every bit as vital to him as it was with me. I found a real partner. I found a real kindred spirit. I found that he was so fucking he was he was willing to risk it all for 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 for, for this for the work. And I I I walked away with like an enormous amount of respect for him and love for him. I also saw a guy who grew up as a child star, um, a guy who was um, felt like he needed to bleed out for his art felt that he needed to live wildly out on the street and in real life in order to sort of maintain that danger in his work. Mm. And uh, I'm coming from a guy, you know, me at this point, where I did all that when I, I didn't have the umbrella of being, you know, a big movie star and I didn't, I didn't have that. But now I'm a guy who's absolutely a committed husband and father. That, that is my life. Like, that, like my life is my family and, and, and what I found is the, the, the well the things that I can tap into and my emotional sort of accessibility of being a dedicated father and, 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 and husband is, is so much greater than when I was sort of this wild animal. Mm. And, uh, and uh, I care about people way more than I care about myself. My ego is dead in that, <laughs> in that sense. So I really wanted to be there for him. And, and, and the first thing I remember seeing him and seeing this like raw nerve and this unbelievable talent, I, 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 I would say, I, I think he's the best actor I've ever worked with. And I really wanted to protect him. And I think more than anything else, I really wanted to show him what a real friend was like. I just remember like saying that to myself, I want to show you what a real friend is like. I feel like you've never mm. really had a real friend. And my friends, the guys that I grew up with, um, they've been my best friends my whole life. They, they you know, they, they uh, you know, couldn't do anything without him. I just like, I value that so much. Right. So we had him on the podcast, um, real early on and before this stuff came out and it was right at a time when he had gotten in trouble down in, um, in, in, in Georgia and he went to rehab and he wrote this movie sort of about his own life called Honey Boy that got nominated for an Oscar and, and he wrote it and he, he started and he played his dad. It was a very, it was a movie about his life. And I kind of had him on sort of celebrating, y- y- you know, where he was at because for a long time he had taken a lot of shit from this industry and uh, here he was sort of on top of the world. And I remember at the time, you know, my, my agents at the time were calling me being like, you, th- you think I could just get a phone call with Shia? Like, maybe we could, like, bring him, you know, just, he was like, you know. And then these, these, uh, these char- you, you know, this, this woman said he did these things to him. And he was just, he was just done, you know, canceled. And, and, um, and I'll say, man, when, when I heard those, I decided, when I heard that, that he had done those things, you know, for me, there really is a red line with people that I need to look at with myself. And through all the shit that I've seen, all the shit that I've done, man, I, I just, I, I can't be down with you if you put your hands on a woman. If you put your hands on a woman or a child, dude, I just like, yeah. I, I can't, man. I can't. I, yeah. I can't. I can't get over that. I can't. And I heard this, you know, about my friend. And, you know, I was really brokenhearted about it. And... Time went by, I mean, like two years. And, you know, I know how much, you know, acting is not only important to him, but like sort of necessary for his survival. And I would reach out on text, you know, checking on him and, 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 and that, but we hadn't made contact. And then I heard that he was having a baby um, and uh, he was married. And um, I reached out to him and... Um, I said, hey, man, maybe it's time for you and me to have another talk. And I made a decision with my team and with him. We're, I needed, again, you go back to the intentionality. 
and and I I really looked at this this role that you have of being a friend, and and being a friend is not about turning your back on somebody when they're when they do something that you find fucking deplorable or when you find disgusting. Your job as a friend is to make sure they don't do it again. And your job now, as this guy's being a father, is to, to, to step in there and say, hey, man, where are you at? Like, what are you doing? What, what kind of work are you doing? Where are you? Like, that's what being a friend is. And everybody in my life is like, worst idea in the world. <laughs> you cannot mm. do that. You cannot do that. Um, and then, you know, he came on, man, and, and, and we spoke. And... Uh, you know, I, I, it was weird because I, I found so many of the same themes and so many of the same, the, the, the heart of what I found in that LWAP community I found in, in Shia. The level of disgust, the level of work, the level of commitment, the level of shame, the level of uh, time spent, this fluency with, with, with his victim. And I wasn't... I had no interest in exonerating him or saying or, or saving him in any way. I wanted to check on him and I wanted to see how he was doing. And I, I, I felt that that was an honest thing. And, you know, just the fact that I had him on, I got, you know, an enormous amount of, of backlash, you know, an enormous amount of, uh, for, the, for really the first time kind of as like a public person, just like kind of hatred. Um, and the fact that I had given somebody who could have, you know, who, who may have done these things that this woman says, you know, that, that really hurt people. And I felt fucking terrible about that, man. Like, I, like. Did you wish you hadn't done it? No, uh, no. Because after talking to him and then going around and talking to women who have been victims themselves, talking to, you know, this one, one woman specifically who we were going to have on, but her, she had health issues and couldn't, but, you know, what, what, what I've found is so many people have reached out who said, like, I was in that place. Like I, I, like, I was in that place where he was. I was in that place where I was, whether I was abusive or not abusive, I was getting there. And, and the drugs and the alcohol were getting the better of me. And, I mean, really, what you, you know, he's, 